So we're going to talk about the four main gas variables that are involved when we want to look at the behavior of gases. And we've talked about these a little bit already, but now we want to look at the relationships between them and start to really kind of focus in on how these variables are related. Okay, so let's take a look at the variables themselves. We have pressure. We've talked a lot about pressure already. You know what pressure is. It's the number of simultaneous collisions between gas particles in the walls of a container or surface. We have volume. Volume is how much space the gas is going to take up. Right? Gases, remember, will take up this, the entire space you give them. So uh, the bigger the container, the more space they're going to take up. Uh, we've got temperature. And we know that temperature is a measurement of kinetic energy, not heat. It's basically telling us how much movement the molecules or the particles of a gas have. And then we have number of particles. Okay, how many gas particles are there? Obviously, if there are more gas particles, there are gonna, there's going to be more, uh, maybe they'll take up more space, or maybe there'll be more collisions, or, or so on. Uh, we represent them with letters, so pressure is represented by a P, that makes sense, right? V, volume, T, temperature, and then number of particles will represent as an N. Um, there's a reason why the PV and T are capitalized and the number of particles isn't capitalized, but we're not going to worry too much about that. So, something important to remember. I really can only look at the relationship between two of these variables at a time. And if I want to do that, I have to make sure that all of the other variables are held constant. That means not changing, not variable, okay? So we'll talk a little bit about how we do that. It's pretty easy. Usually you just don't make, make sure you don't change it. But in the case of pressure, um, there's a way to do it that, that's not obvious, okay? So let's take a look at pressure and volume relationships, okay? In order for uh, us to understand pressure and volume relationships, we have to make sure that we hold the constant temperature. So we're not going to change the temperature. We're not going to heat this or cool it up, cool it down. Uh, and we also need to make sure that we're not adding or removing particles. So we're holding T and N constant. Okay. So if pressure is collisions, if we change the volume, we change how much space the particles have to move. If I lower the volume, I crowd the particles, they're going to hit the walls more often. That means more collisions, that means more pressure. So if I decrease the volume, the pressure increases, that's called an inverse relationship in math. They're inversely related. One goes up, the other goes down and vice versa. If I want to look at pressure and temperature, okay? so. I know that temperature is a measurement of speed of particles, the kinetic energy. So if I increase the temperature, I make the molecules move faster. If they move faster, they hit the wall more often and with greater force. That means more collisions, more pressure. Now, it's important that I keep the volume from changing and I can't add more particles or subtract more particles. So I'm keeping N and V constant and I'm looking just at pressure and temperature. And this is called a direct relationship. If I increase the temperature, I increase the pressure. One goes up, the other one goes up. That's a direct relationship. If I want to look at the relationship between volume and temperature, now I have to be able to change the volume. But I don't want to change the pressure. That's important, and that's a little trickier. It's not just about like not changing the pressure. In order to not change the pressure, I have to let the volume change at will. Okay? So, if I increase the temperature, it causes the particles to move faster. They hit the walls more often. Now, that would normally increase the pressure if I didn't give the molecules more room to move. But if I allow the volume to expand if it needs to, then the overall number of collisions stays the same. But the volume has increased. So I increase the temperature. I increase the volume direct relationship. I'm also not changing the number of particles, so I'm keeping N constant, and I'm keeping pressure constant by allowing the volume to change. If I allow the volume to change, pressure will stay the same. That's an important and kind of tricky distinction. Finally, if we want to look at the number of particles compared to volume, again, we, if we want volume to be one of our variables, we have to let it vary. We have to let it change, okay? So remember, I know that if I allow the volume to change, that I'm going to keep my pressure constant. 
okay? And I'm just not going to change the temperature either. So I'm going to keep pressure and temperature constant, P and T, and I'm going to look at just volume and number of particles, V and N. If I add more particles, there's more particles to collide that would normally cause the pressure to increase, but I'm going to allow the volume to change. And so the volume will increase to keep the pressure constant. And so if I increase the number of particles, I increase the volume. There's another direct relationship. Increase in V, incre or increase in N, increase in V. That's direct. Okay? So the variations, the, the, the relationships that you want to make sure you understand is what happens to one variable when the other one changes. So for pressure and volume, if I increase the volume, I decrease the pressure or vice versa. It's an inverse relationship. The other ones are all direct. If I increase the temperature, I cause more collisions, I increase the pressure. That's a direct relationship. If I increase the temperature and I allow the volume to change, it will get bigger. I increase the volume. That's a direct relationship. And if I increase the number of particles and I allow the volume to change, I will increase the volume. And that's a direct relationship. Now we didn't talk about all the possible combinations. What if I, what will happen to the pressure if I add more particles but I don't allow the volume to change. Think about it. See if you can figure it out. Okay, and we'll talk about it in class.